Mr. President and gentlemen, empires rise and fall. History tells us of the empires of the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Greeks and the Romans, the Arabs, the Persians and the Spaniards. Today, most of the talk is about the Americans and the Russians. On November the 29th, 1947, the United Nations General Assembly voted on a resolution calling for the partition of Palestine into two separate Arab and Jewish states. The resolution of the Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. We, from a nationalist point of view, we did not accept the partition plan because it gave the Israelis, Jews, at that time, more than 55% of the land, total land, total land of Palestine. Under the UN partition plan, the Jewish state was granted more than half the area of Palestine. The Jews numbered a third of the population and owned less than one-tenth of the land. The Arabs would be given the rest. Jerusalem would become an international city under the UN. Both Jewish and Arab states will be linked by an economic union. I mean, I was 18 at the time. And as a student in the last year of the secondary school, we discussed the issue. What's going to be the outcome of this violent action? And I think in our wildest imagination, we could not have foreseen any possible chance for the Palestinians to lose in that confrontation. We could not foresee the possibility of the establishment of an Israel at the expense of Palestine. The Palestinians were unprepared for a war with the Jews. Palestinian society was still underdeveloped and the majority of its people clung to their old way of life. They looked to the Arab states for support. Abdullah of Transjordan, Farouk of Egypt and Ibn Saud of Arabia unite the Arab world against the Jewish state. The Arab regimes, each backing rival sections in the Palestinian leadership, were reluctant to get involved in the Palestine dispute. King Abdullah of Transjordan continued to enjoy British support while Britain prepared to quit Palestine. He coveted the Arab half of partitioned Palestine and held secret talks with both the Zionists and with British Foreign Minister Ernest Bevan to realize his ambition. Bevan uh, always thought uh, that if partition was, if it was necessary, he, he was anti-partitionist, basically, but if, 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 if it became essential to accept partition, the Arab part of Palestine should be united with Transjordan, uh, that, uh, that it should become part of, uh, part of the state of Jordan. I think he thought, and he, I think he was right, uh, that um, what remained in Arab hands after the United Nations partition was put into effect was not capable of being self-supporting, wasn't viable. And together, in linked with the other great Arabic peoples and ourselves, preserve what is valuable to them and to us. Uh, Bevin did give to the King, King Abdullah to understand that um, the entry of the Arab Legion into Palestine would be acceptable to us, provided they didn't cross the partition line laid down by the United Nations. The Zionists had a functioning government, the Jewish Agency, and an underground army of 30,000 soldiers known as the Haganah. The Jewish Agency, led by David Ben-Gurion, was divided over partition. Most were in favor, but Ben-Gurion wanted a larger Jewish state. Recent research has revealed the form their discussions took. Should the Zionists prepare for all-out war, or could they and the Palestinians reach a compromise based on partition? The Haganah thought that there can be arrangement with the Palestinians and with the uh, Arab states on the basis of the United Nations uh, resolution. And uh, from what, from the documents I have seen, from the talks which took place between the two sides, between Palestinian Arabs uh, on, uh, on national level and uh, with Arab states, I'm sure uh, they were right. There, w there was such uh, uh, an alternative 
that Palestinians and the Arab states will uh, accept uh, partition. The likelihood of an all-out Arab-Jewish conflict would depend on what happened in the areas of Palestine where Arabs and Jews lived and worked side by side. In the first days after the UN partition vote, riots and attacks by Arabs on Jews and by Jews on Arabs did occur. But the majority in both communities held back from war. Convinced their terror campaign had forced the British to quit Palestine, the extremist Jewish organizations, the Agun or Etzel, and the smaller Stern Gang, wanted the whole of Palestine for a Jewish state and rejected partition. They started attacking Arabs living in mixed Arab and Jewish cities. The idea was to pull the Arabs into the war. They knew about local arrangements with uh, the Haganah and the Jewish agency between uh, cities like Jaffa and Haifa and uh, between villages like, uh, um, like the villages around this kibbutz and uh, villages like Dir Yassin. They all has a network of local alliances. Um, and uh, they thought the most important thing is to break those alliances. Haifa was Palestine's premier port and largest city, with a population of over 100,000 Jews and Arabs. Here, organizations representing Jewish and Arab workers made common cause to stop the spread of violence. Then, at the end of December 1947, the Irgun struck. Well, at the oil refineries, there were a mixed group of employees, Jews doing largely technical jobs and Arabs doing, doing laboring work. And each day, there were a number of Arab would-be workers used to assemble on the grass verge outside the main gate of, to the refineries. On the morning of the 31st of December, 1947, a lorry containing some Jews passed these workers and lobbed a couple of hand grenades amongst the people waiting for employment. Some were killed and others injured. Word then got around amongst the other Arabs employed within the refineries that the Jews had killed and wounded Arabs. So they then took immediate action and started killing off all the Jews they could get hold of. And in the event, some 47 Jews were were killed. I believe that the action by these Jews through throwing grenades amongst these Arabs waiting for employment was provocative and it was intended to induce a counter-attack to justify the Jews staging a further attack to drive the Arabs out of the area altogether. The definition of legal and illegal forces becomes daily more obscure. Haganah, the force first legally raised for the defense of Jewish settlements, appears to function hand in glove with Irgun Svailaumi, the outlawed terrorist army. Full-scale training is underway in a score of camps throughout the country. Ben Gurion wanted to mobilize the Jews for war with the Arabs. After the Haifa oil refinery massacre, he rejected requests to suppress the Irgun. Ben-Gurion's views represented a minority within the Jewish agency, so he now established secret contacts with Menachem Begin, the Irgun leader. Their joint strategy was to wage war on the Palestinians. Most of the Palestinians didn't want to take, to, uh, to take uh, side, but Ben-Gurion was not satisfied with it. He saw the most important thing is to hit hard at the Palestinians now, and he thought his friends and colleagues in the Jewish agency and in the Haganah doesn't understand what's really important now. By March 1948, although the British were still supposedly in charge, violence had spread to all parts of Palestine. It was becoming a cruel and bloody conflict. At first, Palestinian fighters were victorious. Their attacks on Jewish road convoys succeeded in isolating outlying Jewish settlements and placed Jewish West Jerusalem under siege. Among the Arab guerrilla chiefs, Abdul Khader el-Husseini 
nephew of the Mufti of Jerusalem, who was the Palestinians' exiled leader, proved himself an effective and inspiring military commander. Faced with this crisis, the Zionist leadership rallied behind Ben-Gurion. In early April 1948, he ordered a Haganah offensive, codenamed Plan Dalit, to defeat the Arab guerrilla armies. An elite force, the Haredel Brigade, was mobilized. When I assumed command, middle April, uh, 48 of the RL Brigade, we started with uh, military operations to make sure that the road between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem will not be endangered by the big villages or towns that were along the road. Uh, well from came all the attackers on the convoys. Uh, this was our first goal. 